start with a moment of quiet as we come before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we hear that incredible song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Lord, we come before you as your people now. We come with all our problems that the world presents us with. Our own personal, our own personal dark moments, our fears. But Lord, as we stand in this incredible building, we know that you're there, Lord, to support us, to lead us, to guide us. Father God, your extravagant love calls us together. It called us together long before we even knew you. You already knew us. You chose every one of us here at Trinity Church to be your family. Your family with our Lord Jesus Christ himself. What an amazing love you show towards us. So Lord, as we come this morning before you with praise and thanksgiving, offering you the worship of our hearts and our lives, and open ourselves to the prompting and leading of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you receive our worship, our prayers, our prayers and our offerings through the intercession of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. So Lord, may the time we spend here in your presence bring honour and glory to your name. Amen. Last week I asked you <clears throat> to come and tell me if you'd got any uh, offers of help or knowledge about the Christmas Tree Festival and it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. I've had lots of offers of help. The committee has met and it's all going ahead. Uh, we've got people that want to uh, put Christmas trees in. I can now give you the times for um, the, the, the dates. It's the Friday the 9th will be um, 7 till 8.30 in the evening and that's open to everyone. We're hoping to make it a really atmospheric thing with all the lights on and maybe some uh, Christmas singing as well and music and mulled wine and mince pies. Um, and then Saturday will be 10 while 4. But we still do need offers of help, so do come and speak to me afterwards. Also, if you've got a link with a group that will, wants to put a Christmas tree into the festival, uh, then I have the forms. So if you'd like to come and ask me afterwards, I'll let you have the forms. Um, I think that's everything, but do come and speak to me if you've any ideas or you want to offer help. Thank you so much, Marion. Yeah, it's um, at this Christmas tree festival. It just seems to have a really good feel uh, about it. It's just it's coming together wonderfully. Thanks to Marion and Ken for the work they've done, but the team that they've put together as well. And I just encourage you to support that and get behind it. I think it's going to be a really special occasion. I really do. Um, I want to just thank Sandra. She won't want me to thank her, but I am going to thank Sandra just because last night we had uh, poems and puddings, and it was fabulous. Pam Ayres actually made an appearance last night. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but it were it were brilliant. I don't know how much we raised. It were all seventy five pounds, and it weren't going to the muscular, the the macular degeneration. Yeah, and, and, and wonderful. So a, a, a big thank you to Sandra. Sandra gets behind so much work in church here. Things that we see on the sidelines quite often. I pray for people who uh, are not in limelight and just do things quietly in the background. And Sandra's very much one of those people. So I thank you for all your encouragement and everything that you do. And it, it was an incredible evening. And Pam as were fabulous. She really was. And again, again, something, Sandra, just the shoe boxes again, just to, just to sort of highlight that appeal because it's in November they start getting collected to go back. So um, we've still got a lot of shoe boxes in here, a lot of leaflets. Cause, so can I encourage anybody to either to text some or to text some to people that they know, uh, and let's get them out to to children in, in in Eastern Europe who are so badly in need of so many things. And to, can you imagine just receiving a shoe box full of gifts? when you've got nothing, or you're living in an hard life, what a joy that must be. Uh, and, and, that, and of course, that's what we're trying to create, so. Wonderful. 
We're going to start this morning by standing and singing our first hymn, which is God of Grace and God of Glory. Let's stand to sing God of Grace and God of Glory. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please be seated. It's going to come to a short time of confession. Let's just take a moment before we do that. As children of a loving Heavenly Father, let us ask his forgiveness, for he is gentle and full of compassion. May your loving mercy come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word is a lantern at my feet and a light to my path. 
Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Oh, let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Law, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, just take for a moment of time just to lift to God anything heavy on your hearts this morning. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand to sing again. We're going to sing, O Lord, our God, our majesty is your name. O Lord, our God, our majesty, our majestic is your name. Yes, you may laugh. Let's stand to sing. Thank you.
collect for the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to invite Jacob to come up and give us this morning's reading. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me, to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, well done, Jacob. Appearances can be deceptive, can't they? I might look full of confidence standing here, but inside I am a bag of nerves. In one of the Chronicles of Narnia, which is a group of books for those of you who don't know, Prince Caspian blows his horn to call on the great king of the past to help him in battle and you expect a mighty warrior to show up. But Peter arrives, a little schoolboy. He looks pathetic, but he is the king that saves the day. And that's not unlike Jesus on the cross. He was stripped, mocked, beaten, spat on, flogged, then nailed to a cross and left to die. To many people watching, he looked pathetic. And yet, he was the king who saved the people. Appearances can be deceptive. At the start of this reading, the Apostle Paul seems pathetic. As Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, he was probably under house arrest in Rome. If the average person had met Paul, they probably would have seen him as nothing more than a common prisoner waiting trial. But as you read this passage, you see that Paul understands that he is part of something much bigger. In verse 2, he talks about being a steward of God's grace. Paul sees himself as having a God-given role in making the gospel known to other people, specifically to the Gentiles who hadn't yet heard it. You might think what a privilege it was 
for Paul. I believe God calls us all and gives us all unique privileges. Maybe not on the same scale as Paul and his calling on the road to Damascus, but I have no doubt that he calls us all and through his grace we can do amazing things just as Paul did. When I felt called to the reader ministry, it was a slow burn. No, I no, no, no. And even now, sometimes, I think that he has made a mistake. Who am I to lead and preach to you all? I'm a tiny, or maybe not so tiny, cog in a massive wheel. But as I stand before you now, I feel privileged to do so. I believe it is a privilege to serve God, even in a small way. God has already begun to unite all things together again in Christ, and he's begun in the church. He's done this by breaking through all the barriers that divide us to make us into a new community in Christ. Nobody ever thought that Gentiles would one day be on complete, completely equal footing before God. We are, Paul says in verse 6, heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul realised that he was part of something much bigger, part of the plan of God who created all things. He said, on behalf of you Gentiles, Paul had been arrested because of his association with the Gentiles. He could see that his suffering had a purpose. It wasn't just random. He was giving his life to a purpose that transcended his imprisonment. Paul's unique privilege is to reveal the gospel to not just the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well. He spoke of becoming a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace. Most of the time, I think we tend to talk about what we do for God. Paul didn't. He saw ministry not as his gift to God, but God's gift to him. Because Paul grasped the gospel and his part in it. He had confidence and hope even in the middle of trials. <coughs> he knew he was part of something bigger and it gave him hope even under house arrest. Understanding the gospel gives us all confidence and hope in our trials. We all need to live for something bigger than ourselves. Paul David Tripp writes, there is a woven inside each of us, there is woven inside each of us, a desire for something more, a craving to be part of something bigger, greater, and more profound than our relatively meaningless day-to-day -day existence. That longing to be part of something more in your life that's God-given. What is it? It's the Gospel. Understanding the Gospel allowed Paul to see his life completely differently. The same thing can happen for us. We can see ourselves as servants working for Jesus Christ. When we serve God, we can see the ministry as a gift from God, 
rather than an obligation or something we're doing for God. That will give us humility because God has chosen us even though we are the least of all God's people. Understanding the gospel gives us confidence and hope. Paul talks about a marvellous mystery that was hidden from the prophets but has now been revealed. That in Christ there is no distinction between Jewish and Gentile believers, but that we're one in Christ. His church joined together for a unique privilege and calling. God uses ordinary people, but what he does with those ordinary people is extraordinary. God chooses and uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Many of the people who helped to evacuate soldiers from Dunkirk during the Second World War in small boats didn't feel extraordinary. But what they did was definitely extraordinary and they saved thousands of lives. We don't always know whether what we do helps other people. But with God's grace and through faith, just maybe we can make a difference. And sometimes it's only when we look back on things that we realise what a unique privilege we have. When I look around, I see lots of ordinary people, me included. But with God's grace, we can do extraordinary things. Paul writes in verse 12, In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Faith is not something you do with your brain. Faith is a transaction of your heart that changes the way you live your life. You live what you believe. Excuse me. Because of all this, we have access to God. Understanding the gospel gives us confidence and hope. We can know that even though we're ordinary, our lives are part of something that is far from ordinary. We are all one in the body of Christ. Your gift may seem small. Your life may seem small, but it's not. It's part of something bigger, and it's part of what God is doing in the world. Appearances can be deceptive, as we know when we look at what Paul achieved. This reading reminds us that God's grace flows into our lives, not only for our own benefit, but also for the benefit of others. Paul clearly saw how he fit into the big picture of God's plan. How do you see yourselves as fitting in? That's a question to ponder during the week. And I'd like to close with the first verse of a song. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. An army of ordinary people. A kingdom where love is the key. A city a light to the nations, heirs to the promise are we. A people whose life is in Jesus, a nation together we stand. Only through grace are we worthy, inheritors of the land. Amen. Thank you so much, Linda. You may be a small cog, but what an amazing cog. 
you are. What an amazing cog we all are in God's larger plan for everything. And uh, like you say, Paul did identify that. And sometimes I think we have to remember that as well, that we're all a part of God's, this incredible church that God gives us amazing grace. And on the strength of that, let's stand to confess our faith in God. Brothers and sisters, let us declare our faith in God as we say together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with the power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as Alison comes and does, gives us our intercession. In the power of the Spirit <clears throat> and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, the maker of the earth, the natural world and the multitude of living things that fill it, we praise and thank you for the wonder, variety and beauty of all that you have created. You have gifted us this precious world to care for and share and provide everything we need. Grant us the wisdom, understanding and creativity to use and share your priceless gifts wisely for the benefit of all. Inspire and enable us to restore and respect, to preserve and protect our wondrous universe for all, now and in the future. As the season gently moves from summer into autumn, with sunny days and rainy days, we give thanks for the gift of food, for how it brings us together and nourishes us all. Let us remember those who, we may, who may not have enough. Father God, we lift to you those who have no harvest to celebrate, whose store cupboards are empty. We pray for people throughout the world who may be hungry and thirsty. Help us work together to share the Lord's resources so that everyone can be fed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, we think about those who are homeless, those who live each day with abuse, intimidation and fear, those struggling to survive, those separated from their loved ones and for all refugees in desperate need of help peace, safety. We also think about those dealing with natural or man-made disasters and those who are persecuted for their faith alone. Merciful and gracious Lord, through your great love and compassion, please turn these situations around and bless those lives who are overwhelmed. Protect and strengthen them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for Nick, our bishop, and for the life of our parish in the Leeds Diocese. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments, and the fellowship of your people. Within our united benefice, we pray for our clergy leaders, for Steve and Andrew. And at Trinity Church, we give thanks for the unwavering support of our readers, church wardens and all members of our church family who serve you. Furnish all of them with your strength, Lord, and guide them with your wisdom, courage and love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our local community of Osset and Gawthorpe and for all people in their daily life and work. And we pray for the young and the elderly, for families, and for all who feel or are alone. We know, Lord, that you are the cornerstone and that salvation is found from only you. In our busy lives, help us to continue to remain more in you through taking time to listen, to give thanks, or just to be still. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we pray for those in need, for the sick, sorrowful and bereaved. Heavenly Lord, please give strength and comfort to all those who have ill health, 
be it in mind, body or spirit. Help the recently bereaved as they grieve for the loss of their loved ones. Support them with your love and grace as they come to terms with their loss. We remember those known to us personally and those named on our prayer list as we briefly pause to think of anyone who currently needs help, love or support. Lord Jesus, we pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing to those at their time of need. And we humbly offer our thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Alice. Brothers and sisters, will you please stand for the peace? God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share that peace amongst ourselves.
generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. At your table we presented the money, a symbol of the work you have given us to do. Use it, use us in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise him. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and the blood of your dear Son. <coughs> On the night before he died, at supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He brought the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. And bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to sing together as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, everybody is welcome to the Lord's table. Please, if you don't want to take the elements and you just want a blessing, just keep your arms down at your side and I'll gladly give you a blessing.
brothers and sisters, this morning, as they were giving communion, the Holy Spirit showed up, Lord. Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you that you can come and bless this church. That as we come and worship and praise you, that you continue to bless us. And that you come and stand in the midst of this building, Lord. And bless every one of us. Lord, as we worship and continue to build your throne here on earth. Lord God, I just pray that we can go out and tell people about you and what a difference you make to every one of our lives. As Linda said this morning, she may be a small cog, but by what amazing cogs we are. Lord. So Lord God, just we just thank you. We just give everything to you. And just continue to bless us. Continue to lead and guide this church into a bigger, better church. To a voice in this community of Osset and Gawthorpe. A building that will shout out, just come Lord. Just come and continue to bless us and we'll continue to give everything that we have at you, Lord. We just want to throw our prayers at you this morning. So just come, Lord Jesus. Let's just sing that Jesus we in the throne here again. may always proceed and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite Ken and his team out to see what we've been doing in Sunday school this morning. Well actually Andrew we've got something to show you. Whoa. Yeah. So, uh, if you'd like to bring them all out folks. We've been busy. We had Harvest today, well our Sunday club version of Harvest. Uh, following the harvest service last week. And uh, so they went off into the uh, churchyard, picked some leaves, and we did a spot of leaf printing. So if you'd like to hold them up so that we can all see the uh, work that you've been doing. There we are. So absolutely gorgeous they are. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow, absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that you've done harvest and you've been able to celebrate it together. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, that would have uh, affected it. Oh dear, that's fantastic. So, uh, and we had a wonderful story about a mouse in a church um, called Casper. So we've had a really nice time this morning. Uh, now we're going to have a song, and I've got uh, Jacob all lined up. But the first of all, the song goes like this. You will know it. Uh, do join in. The words are very easy. It goes, Let us praise the Lord with guitar. Let us praise the Lord with guitar. Let all the earth sing praise to the Lord. Let us make a joyful sound. Now, first of all, we're going to have the, um, uh, what is it? It's bells first, isn't it? Yes, it is. Right, bells. So, Jacob's on hand. Would you like to give out some of the bells, please? 
Now, if you just pop your pictures down on the floor, so you can then have instruments. So uh, we're going to have some bells. Now it goes. Uh, let's praise the Lord with the bells. So what you have to do is keep the bells still, still. <laughs> She's in beavers now, so I have to watch her now, you see. So, okay, so, so, so <laughs> let's praise the Lord with the bells, let's praise the Lord with the bells, and after each bells, they give, to, give us two rings, okay? Here we go, ready? <laughs> let us praise the Lord with the bells, let us praise the Lord with the bells, guitar, let all the earth sing praise to the Lord, let us make a joyful song. Tambourines, there, Jacob. Who are you going to give the tambourines to? Okay. Right. So. Oh, right. Yeah. Long time, Jacob. There you go. <laughs> there we are. There you go. Treat them a bit like a drum, because we won't hear the bells. Yet. Bang you bang it. So we go, let's praise the Lord with tambourines and then you beat it twice. Okay? Here we go. Let us praise the Lord with tambourines. Let us I'll tell you I'll tell you what, let me show you. Right, okay, right. We get that, we get that, we go bang, bang. Okay? I can drum. Okay. Take two. Let us praise the Lord with the drum. I just said drums now. <laughs> it here. Right, okay, and again. Take three. Let us praise the Lord with tambourines. Let us praise the Lord with tambourines. The bells, guitar, let all the earth sing praise to the Lord. Let us make a joyful sound. And now we've got the horns. Okay. My favourite. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew needs a horn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try not to peel it off, even though it's a bit loose. That would be great. Right. Okay. Right, Andrew wants one. Yeah. Is that all of them or have you got any left? Is that it? Right. Okay. Now I know you normally don't give two weeks, but you can this morning. Right. Let us praise the Lord with the horns. Let us praise the Lord with the horns. Tambourines. The bells. Guitar. Let all the earth sing praise to the Lord. Let us make a joyful sound. Let us praise the Lord with a clap. So that's all of you, right? Let us praise the Lord with a clap. Let us praise the Lord with a clap. Tambourines. Sorry. Let's try that. Oh. Horns. Tambourines. The bells. Guitar, let all the earth sing praise to the Lord, let us make a joyful sound. you like this one? With a click. I can't do it! So does somebody. Right. Let us praise the Lord with a click. Let us praise the Lord with a click. With a clap. With the horns. Tambourines. The bells. Guitar. Let all the earth sing praise to the Lord. Let us make a joyful sound. Last one. Let us praise the Lord with a shout. Hooray! Let us praise the Lord with a shout. No, oh, come on. Was that rubbish or what? It was, yeah. Let us praise the Lord with a shout. Let us praise the Lord with a shout. With a click. With a clap. With the horns, tambourines, the bells, guitar, let all the earth sing praise to the Lord, let us make a joyful sound. Goodness me. Brothers and sisters, before the blessing, let's stand to sing our final hymn this morning. We're going to sing Thou Whose Almighty Word. Let's give everything to God that we have finally got in our system this morning. Let's stand together to sing.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love today and always. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning.